Now, Tara on DMA. Good morning. You've known him as our state treasurer, regular guest on WTMA, and now one of the stars of the Bravo reality show that's uh, filmed right here in Charleston, Southern Charm. He is a T-Rab, Thomas Ravenel. Welcome. Oh, uh, good to be on the show again, Tara. How are you? Yeah, good. Making making some news uh, here lately. For, I, I want to ask you about uh, about uh, your political career and all the things going on. But the first thing I got to know, everybody in Charleston has weighed in on. They've seen the first episode of this and they've weighed in on what they think. What do you think? Do you think you were, did you like the show? Do you think you were portrayed sure. fairly? You're happy with it? You know, I watched the show with a friend of mine. They sent me an episode on the DVD about a week before it came out. And I watched it, and then I asked my friend, I go, my friend was in Michigan. He was up there freezing. I said, Thomas, can I come see you in Florida? I'm freezing up there. <laughs> I said, yeah, come on down. You know, he spent four days here, and we sat there, and we watched it. And I said, well, what do you think? I mean, you don't, you know, you're not caught up in South Carolina politics or what's going on, and we're just good friends, and he's a business associate. And he said, uh, how do you think they captured me? And you think I was portrayed? Poorly or positively, he said, Thomas, I think they portrayed you accurately. He, he said, you know, they showed both sides of the coin. But, you know, when you do these reality shows, they mic you out. They've got the cameras there. You know, you have a few drinks. And after a while, you, you forget the cameras are there. And so I think it was, you know, uh, accurate. I mean, for example, that one dinner party probably lasted three hours, but they'll show eight minutes of it. Mm-hmm. So, you know, of course, they're going to show the most scintillating parts of it and cut out all the boring parts. But, um, yeah, I thought it was fairly accurate. I know a lot of those people that are on the show are a lot younger than me. And, I mean, truth be known, we had the polo match, we had the dinner party, and then everybody left, you know, and they went downtown and they partied till whatever, two in the morning. I went to bed probably like 11 o'clock and started <laughs> that night. <laughs> By myself in the house, by myself. Of course, they don't capture any of that. But um, it's, it's it's been an interesting experience. But uh, we'll just have to see how how it all plays out. Well, I know your brothers and sisters were kind of hesitant about you doing the show. I don't know how your father felt. Um, what reaction have you gotten from your family? You, you know, they were dead set against it, as was uh, a lot of Charleston. But. Um, I've talked to the Bravo people, and they've said, you know, that they do these shows all over the country, and that, that you know, Charleston's been the most probably vitriolic in its opposition huh. to, the, to the project. And all these people are attacking me or, or who, whomever they're attacking it. I think they themselves are making Charleston look bad, just in their response, their negativity. I mean, it's a TV show. You've got thousands of channels. I don't know how many channels you have. I don't watch a lot of TV, but you can always change the channel. Mm-hmm. And I cannot embarrass anybody except myself. You know, people are saying, well, you're going to embarrass South Carolina. You're going to shame Charleston. Or, you know, it's only within my power to, to shame myself. I mean, Charleston's been through a lot. You know, hurricanes, earthquakes, we've talked about this. But um, mm-hmm. I just think people need to just settle down. And um, <laughs> the more vitriolic their attacks are, the more mean-spirited Charlestonians come across as. And I just think that uh, some of that just needs to stop. I've talked to people in the business, and they and they're really shocked at how how mean it's been. Not just you know the comments and the blogs, but in the papers. You know, for example, City Paper. I read that review by Stephanie Barna, and um, this, this is really mean and scathing. And uh, you know, they can, you know, I would think that you know after having read that, that I was worse than Adolf Hitler himself. Hmm. So you don't think this is uh, reflected badly on Charleston at all? Uh, the shut it could be anywhere. Yeah. It's just, a, just regular people. And, uh, I mean, we've got the beautiful backdrop. I'm not going to say anything negative against the city I love. You know, uh-huh. I've got deep roots here. And, you know, strong anchor in the community. Well, um, Thomas Ravenel, and we're talking about Southern Charm and, and your future. You uh, mentioned when we saw this on the show that you sold your home, which was beautiful, in Charleston. And are, have you permanently moved to Florida? No, I'm just here. temporarily. Okay. You know, I was down here to play polo, but you know, I hurt my ribs, as you know, and so I'm sort of convalescing now. It's trying to, you know, the doctor said, don't get on a horse for six weeks. Mm-hmm. So, um, but in a lot of pain. 
you know, hurt my coccyx, which is the tailbone. Uh, I've got a major contusion in my in my ribs. I fell off the floor. I had to bail off the horse. I didn't fall. And but I bounced into a wooden um, bench, which shouldn't have been where it was. I was trying to hook this guy. This guy was trying to score. And, and he told me, had I not bailed when I did, the horse and myself would have been killed. Oh. So I, I had to get off the horse. And, and there's normally a big run through when you run through the end line of a polo field. And a polo field's ten size of ten football fields. And so there wasn't enough runoff. They should have made the field shorter, not a regulation. And so I don't know if there's any liability on the club on the club's part, but um, I didn't have enough room to run through. And, and as a result, I, I'm out of polo for the season. Well, that's what I want to ask you. Okay, well, so you're out of polo for the season. You got nothing to do. Uh, you had talked once about running against Lindsey Graham. Um, any plans to run again? People have been talking about reviving your political career. Yeah, well, you know, if Graham wins that primary. I will uh, absolutely look at throwing my hat in the ring. You know, and I've written in the um, the local paper, uh, the News and Courier, that the two party system is failing in this country, and it's time that the people had a real pro taxpayer, pro free market, social libertarian in the mix. And we haven't had that choice. You know, we get the choice between the, the Republicans and the Democrats, and the Democrats are controlled by all these special interests, namely the unions and and then the Republicans are controlled by, you know, the military industrial complex, the prison industrial complex, and all of these other sets of uh, groups. And then the two collude. You can take the farm bill. You know, the reason we pay twice the, the cost in sugar is because the FanDuel family owns and controls the politicians down in Florida. You know, people like Rubio, who's supposed to be the new rising star, and they get together with the Republicans, say, up in, um, in the Northeast the dairy farmers and, and then the wheat farmers or the people out in the Midwest. Yeah, and I mean, well, then you're... Then they go to the Democrats and they say, look, you go along with us and then we'll give you food stamps. We'll go along with food stamps. It's like the military industrial complex. Will, Republicans will go along with the Give us more money for the military and we'll give you more money for your welfare domestic programs and your average taxpayer gets screwed. Well, um, Thomas Revenant, I, I, mean, I have to say um, it would be a tough choice for me personally if I had to choose between you and... Lindsey Graham, I mean, because Lindsey Graham is cozied up to the Muslim um, Brotherhood, uh, which to me is a lot more serious thing than um, being indicted, for, you know, federally for drug use. But, um, you know, that's just, hey, that's just me. How much of, I'd just be curious, you'd run as an independent. Um, how much of your own money are you willing to put into this? And would you just be running well, to give people an alternative or do you think you can win? Well, I just want to put out some libertarian ideas out there. You know, basically, what this country was founded on libertarian ideas, and talk a lot about that. You know, for example, in the 1600s, and we've talked about this. You know, the big issue of the day was uh, religious freedom. You know, it was thought yeah. conventional wisdom that without a you know coercive, you know, religious authority, that society would dissolve into chaos and disorder. But you know, John Locke pointed out, who's basically the, the godfather of the, our founding documents. You pointed out the real disturbers of the peace of those who are intolerant. So I just want to get out there and point out the, the real role of government. And I think that Republicans and Democrats have got that confused. And so the voters really don't have a choice. You know, go with these Republicans who are bought and paid for by certain interest groups or vote for the Democrats. They don't have an in-between. No, they I don't. don't to, and it it, it and keeps people frustrated. paid for by anyone. So... Yeah, I would say, you know, none of my rich friends are going to vote for me because they know I don't do corporate welfare. You know, every American taxpayer, to me, is too big to fail. And that's how I look at it. I'm going to be the hero of the small business and individual taxpayers and attacking the others for corporate giveaways. Thomas, um, I, I, I want to get into, I want to ask you this um, about this. People are saying that you never apologized or that you need to apologize uh, I guess for the you know the t the drug indictment, the time you served um, in prison um, for that, and when you were um, the treasurer of the state, what do you say to that? Well, I would say that uh, that's not true. I did apologize because I made an error in judgment, you know, given my position as state treasurer. And I can assure you, having done my time, that's an error I won't ever make again in a position of public trust. But the so-called crime. I committed the crime 
We have spent more than a trillion dollars in taxpayer money trying to fight unsuccessfully for 43 years. It's ridiculous. There's nothing wrong with it. So while I have apologized for poor situational judgment, I'm not going to say what I did was wrong because I don't believe it was. Now, um, you know, and I'm also, you know, I like Mark, but I'm not going to be a Mark Sanford going around saying I'm sorry every five seconds. Mm. I mean, that doesn't mean that I that I didn't take responsibility, which I did. Talking to Thomas Ravenel, a former state treasurer and uh, one of the stars of the new Bravo Southern Charm reality show. Uh, well, are you watching what's going on in the, the Ukraine? you have an opinion on it? Um, yeah. You know, Ukraine, you know, that is a situation that, um, you know, I should have word that. That's, uh, you know, Ukraine is a sticky wicket. The bottom line is we have no business whatsoever getting involved militarily or financially over there. I mean, Graham will tout the 1994 decision, the deal to denuclearize, uh, which established sovereignty of Ukraine. But, uh, hey, no more wars. You know, for war, there must be a compelling national interest, a clear, reachable objective. And an exit strategy. I mean, American politicians keep making promises they can't keep. I mean, take a look at Syria. Why throw down a red line if you can't keep it? I mean, he, Graham was backing the allies, the, the rebels, who it turned out were being, were affiliated with al-Qaeda. I mean, he needs to decide if he want to fight against al-Qaeda or fight with them. And these same guys went and cut the head off of a, a priest, you know, a Christian priest. And, um, yeah, they've got it on videotape. You know, they took pictures of it with their cameras. Does it frustrate you, Thomas Ravenel, that there's been so much attention on your, um, what happened with you with the cocaine, the drug conviction, yet Lindsey Graham can go um, hang out with and endorse the Muslim Brotherhood um, and nobody even reports it? Yeah, I mean, that's what I wrote in the city paper. You know, the real criminal file. Not here, anyway. are not the people that, you know, use recreational drugs in their home hurting nobody. You know, the real criminal crime, in fact, the war on drugs creates crime. I mean, we've got 20,000 drug gangs in this country. We incarcerate five times the world rate, eight times the rate of Canada. Yet Canada is like the eighth safest country in the, in the world. We're 83rd. I mean, our whole policy puts billions of dollars in the hands of the most violent criminals on the face of the earth. It doesn't work. But yet you've got these you know, politicians who have these, you know, uh, supposedly, who are supposedly morally upright, blemish background, who are running the republic into the ground. They're bankrupting the country and future generations. That, as Mark Twain said, is the true criminal class. Well, and those are the people I'll be running against. Thomas Ravenel, sounds like um, you're really fired up, and uh, I'm certainly looking forward to future episodes of uh, Southern Charm to see what happens next just want to thank you for joining us this morning on 1250 wtma i hope your cockix feels better (laughs) i hope you have cockix recovered you know i did that when i was pregnant i fell down the stairs and i had no choice i couldn't fall forward so i had to land on my rear let me tell you i know i know the pain you're in my friend yeah well it wasn't hitting the ground it was bouncing up into that wooden bench it just was really bad maybe polo isn't for you just stop to think about that Maybe, yeah. uh, maybe. maybe I need to get back in politics. That's the way of God telling me to get back into yeah. politics. Perhaps. Yeah. You know what? Uh, sorry about that, Tom. But politics yeah, be, yeah. be better with you in it because I tell you what, be a lot more colorful and a lot more inter- amusing. I, I, I had to hit a break. I hate, hate to do this. Thomas, thank you so much for joining us this morning on 1250 right. WTMA. Thank you. Thank Bye-bye. you. Find out what's going on before you get to work. Don't miss a minute of Tara on TMA with Tara Servatius. Weekday mornings from 5.30 till 10 on 1250 WTMA. The Low Country's Big Talker.